Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching a Now You Know special report. Okay, so let's get into this. So Vox came out with a video about the duck curve. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty excited because I know about the duck curve and I'm glad that they were going to tell people about it. Yeah. Um, and then I watched the video and um, I suggest you go watch the video now. Yeah, it's like three and a half and minutes long. And then you can come back and we can talk about it. In this video, they, they talk all about the duck curve. They talk mm -hmm. about all of the problems um, with having renewable energy, specifically solar, mm -hmm. happen in the middle of the day. Right. So what happens is they have a demand curve um, throughout a, a day, you know, of people, you know, oh, I'm turning on my light switch. I'm turning on an air conditioner. I'm mm -hmm. turning on some machinery, you know, stuff like that. You're using power. It, that means that there's a certain demand, which means that you need to create energy for that demand. So right. you need to turn on power plants. You need to pull some levers and some switches and, and make sure that everything is is up and running all of the all of your power generation and what happens is in the middle of the day the the solar energy comes online and it means that the solar energy is basically taking care of most of this problem right. so most of the most of the energy needs are completely taken care of by solar um, and so you get this duck curve where all of the solar generation basically lowers the demand curve kind of artificially because you know, it, it drives it down. I got to say one thing I didn't like about this video is they kept talking about the demand curve and the supply curve as if they were the same thing. They are not the same thing. Um, the supply of energy goes up in the middle of the day as right. solar comes online. The demand does not go down. Um, there's actually more demand in the middle of the day. And I want to point that out. They were erroneous with this because in the middle of the day in a hot place like Arizona or California, you've got all that air conditioning that's needed. Right. And so they kept interchanging those two terms uh, supply and demand they're mm -hmm. not the same right so we finally we we get to the end of the video and this is where i thought they were going to go into all of the new technologies that are that are coming online for storing power because right. so here's the problem right you have all of these old power plants these coal and nuclear power plants which they admit and they can't bring them up online fast enough so after the after all right. the solar energy is done um and all the generation is all done right um there's there's a peak where you know the sun sets so all of the the solar goes away and you know everyone's at home and they are turning on their tvs and whatever and so there's this it looks like a peak now i think depending on you know where this place is um, and what time of year it is, I think that the demand curve probably isn't that substantially like like there's some huge demand where everyone goes home because it's not like we all take a siesta in the middle of the day. We're all working. Right. But because the sun goes down, suddenly this this demand, the supply demand curve, um, no, it's, it, it's the it's the demand curve after you chop out the the. The After the, renewable energy, right. it looks like there's this huge peak. And the derivative of that of that curve as it goes up, or the, the slope of the curve, is, is quite high, which means that you need to turn things on really fast, which coal plants and, and other power plants, fossil fuels, are really bad at doing. Right. In fact, in most cases, you don't turn on and off a coal plant or nuclear power plant. It stays on 24-7. That's how it was designed. And that is the problem. That is why we're getting a video like this. I think that the, the crux of this is, is that those power plants were not designed to turn on and off. And now they have to either turn on and off or they have to store that solar energy during the day or they have to curtail it. And here's the part I didn't like about this video. They only talked about curtailment, curtailment. of solar energy. They only said that they had to switch off solar panels. Right. Which is one way to solve it, but it is really the worst way to solve right. it. Well, it's because they've already invested in power plants. They don't want to invest in more stuff. The but here again is where I was hoping for Vox to start to talk about power storage, batteries, other forms of like pumped hydro. Right. There are lots of different solutions your, for this problem. Right. Your EV is a potential solution because right. it's a mobile battery. It's a, it's a battery that's that you you have hooked up to the grid whenever you're not using it. And and we're seeing solutions coming out of this. It's not like this is some new concept. Mm -hmm. There are we're testing it right now. There's there's. Um, tests where you drive your car and you plug it in during the day and it either gives energy to the grid or it takes energy to the grid depending on how the grid would like you to do that right and this is exactly what tesla battery packs are for this exactly. is exactly the point is that you know there is a huge amount of solar energy during the day and in some places you're actually able to generate more than is needed more than you're using more than the the 
you know, the coal power plants need to produce. And so instead of curtailing this energy, if you were to store it, that means that you could apply this energy during that peak, right? And that would completely smooth out your curve. Right. And in fact, if things are to continue, which they certainly will, with added more and more solar, um, the duck curve gets deeper and deeper and deeper below the, you know, oh, we're, we're, this is what we can keep the, the, the coal plants on at because economically they can't, we can't turn them off and on because economically they're big and we didn't think about this when we made them, right? All of this stuff. But as it gets deeper and deeper, that is all storage. That is all, right. as soon as you start to store that, that becomes what you're going to be using throughout the night. And eventually, that's going to become what we're going to use to 100%. We, we don't need to rely on fossil fuels if you can just store all the solar and wind energy. How do you have a video that you call, you know, uh, the duck curve, solar energy's biggest challenge, and not mention any, any solutions kind of storage other than right. curtailment? Right now, Tesla has a solution. It's pretty simple. You put a power wall in your house, you put solar on your roof, and now your own, you're the your own power company. Right, and you can... You can reduce demand just over the course of the day. You can supply all of your needs right. over the course of the day. Right. And for for larger, you know, grid solar operation, if you include some some um, some storage, then you've completely eliminated this duck curve problem because now that duck curve gets completely smoothed out and and now you're just able to take off more and more fossil fuels. How do you make a video like this which leaves everyone misinformed and it, it leaves the average person who doesn't know much about energy storage and stuff, it leaves them thinking, oh, there's a big problem with solar energy. Right, this is Vox News. A lot of people get their information from this and you know, I could understand if this was from Prager University or Breitbart or Fox News or something like that. But this is a very left leaning program, right? Well, and they left it just open ended like, oh, well, I guess we have no real solution. Right. When it's we a have, real challenge. There are lots of different solutions to this. Um, and they didn't talk about a single one. Right. They didn't even mention the word storage. No. They maybe, maybe, maybe mentioned it once, but there was absolutely no no idea they gave you no right. clue as to what it was so if you're not in the know you're just left feeling like well solar is just gonna ruin everything these poor demand managers what are they yeah. gonna do Th that's the other thing these demand managers use co computers right uh, it's, so it's the, a the, computer the, their that job has to is to, it, right. to turn on a computer and make sure it's running properly and, and work and, on some different algorithms or something right. like that it's, the it's not like there's some guy running around you know bob with the switches right. it's you know it's not like that and, anymore. and they also made it sound like this damn solar is hurting the grid there's just so much energy we don't right. know what to do with it all it's such a good problem it's a wonderful problem right do you really want coal plants burning coal right. in your neighborhood do you so, want to live next to one of those I, I think the biggest question for me was why on earth did they not talk about any solutions when it's vox it's a pretty well respected i think I news know source and and it's and it's a liberal news source like it should be they should be talking about who, green energy in a positive light who sponsored it at the very end, the guy says that it's that they thank their sponsor at principal investment. Right. So and it's a large multi-billion dollar investment company based in Iowa. And my guess is that if you do a little digging on this company, you're going to find that they are probably heavily invested in probably the stalwarts of, uh, you know, coal and right. nuclear and and probably would like to send the message that we don't want these upstart solar things biting into our our uh, little game that we got going here because right. you know when i was a kid and i invested in utilities which were great investments mm -hmm. they're great investments by the way because they're a monopoly right you think these are just wonderful people they provide my power they're so wonderful right and that is pretty wonderful except that they're not interested in doing something that's clean they just want to build another power plant that's right. probably dirty and well, cheap. It, w it was cheap. That was the reason that we were stuck with all these but, coal power plants, because that was the cheapest form of energy. And who cares what it does to the environment, you know? And for a long time, I guess that that was okay. That could, that and, could work. And here's the thing. If you invested billions of dollars in a plant like that, mm -hmm. you want to get your money's worth out of it. You don't want to shut that down prematurely, because if you shut it down prematurely, you lost a lot of money. That's true. That's the bottom line. That's why we're talking about this right now. If we were starting from scratch... We'd just be building solar and wind and, and, batteries. and batteries. We would not be building coal and nuclear if we're starting from scratch. But Absolutely. we're not starting from scratch. 
And that's why we're doing this. And why do you think all the new plants going online are natural gas? Because in this country, natural gas is so cheap. Right. But every year, solar is getting cheaper. Now we're at the point where it is cheaper. And now all these people who invested in those old power plants are going, crap, how do we get our money's worth out of those? Right. Got to keep them running. So it's going to happen, you know, first it's going to happen with coal. Then it's going to happen with, with some of the other, you know, continuous running ones. Then I think it, it, the, I think the last one will be peaker plants and then we'll be home free as it were. Yeah. And you heard it in Australia, all of those politicians, all of those people said, you can't do that. You can't build a big battery. That's not going to work. And guess what? It worked and right. it worked way better than anyone thought. And right. that's why Elon's about to announce a gigawatt hour of battery storage. Right. They just put in another one in Belgium. I mean, it's, it's sole purpose is just to you know, balance out everything. The bigger you get it, the the more balanced you can have your grid, the more, you know, consistent everything is because it's like a bank. I mean, imagine exactly. if you couldn't, imagine if you couldn't put down money. Someone would hand you money and you have to be like, ah, and you'd have to spend it immediately. Right. You just had to, as soon as you got it, you had to spend it. Wouldn't and be very efficient. You had to just keep making money. You couldn't like, hi boss, I can't have a paycheck. You have to keep just sending me pennies or right. something. Like that would be the only way you could do stuff. Right. This is having a bank account where you can say, I am in, here is some energy and I will take some energy, you know? Exactly. And the other question is, what do you want to live next to? Do you want to live next to a peaker plant, a coal plant, or do you want to live next to a battery and solar? Right. And do you want to live on a, on a, on a planet that's, you know, heating up and the, the seas are rising and the, the, you know, the, the oceans are acidifying? And, and where there's pollution. I right. mean, coal plants are not clean. No. Let's stop with the clean coal uh, marketing. That's yep. not true. It's, they're not clean. So that's why this bothered us so much because it just, it raised this problem, which isn't really a problem. We have solutions to this problem. And it's a big solution. It's just a big solution that, you know, we're just beginning, you know, it wouldn't make sense to start to implement battery packs before we got a right. duck curve that would actually, you know, produce energy. Right. So, I mean, all of this talk of curtailment is a load of crap. Yep. And so we just want to set the record straight on that. We hope that you enjoyed watching. Big shout out to our Patreon patrons who got to see this uh, before everybody else. Um, just a, a little perk to say thank you so much uh, for helping to support this channel. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Now, now you know. know.